then our next speaker is Dr. Mayurika Lahiri. She is Associate Professor at Biology Department in Aysar Pune. She has obtained her PhD in Cancer Biology from Wolverhampton uh, University in UK. And her area of research is DNA damage and uh, 3D studies of uh, breast cancer progression. I request her to share her experience. Thank you very much and welcome all of you to Aisa Pune. I think of all the faculty here, I'm the oldest faculty <laughs> because I've joined when Aisa Pune started. So it's been a long journey for me since 2008. So Aisa started in 2006 of August. I joined in 2008, January. So I've been here. Uh, what you saw in the movie, uh, it was a small campus at NCL um, Innovation Park. That's where I was with a few other faculty from physics, chemistry, maths, uh, and then we were just th four biologists at that time. And uh, the reason I chose to work on breast cancer was I did work on in my PhD in, in England, but then when I came back, I, dis I saw that there was a difference in how Indian women were getting affected with breast cancer compared to uh, the uh, Western uh, population. And here it is very, very aggressive for the Indian women. And Indian women get it when they're like 40s, 30s, sometimes in their 20s. And uh, we really wanted, I really wanted to figure out like why is there this huge difference? First of all, genetically we are different from the West. Within India itself, we are very diverse. Genetically, the East is different from the West, North from the South, the Middle is uh, again this mixture and we travel within the states like I'm from Calcutta I'm born and brought up in Calcutta but I'm here my my career is in in the west of this country of the country so there's a lot of migration lot of movement so um, we I, I really wanted to understand why is uh, breast cancer so aggressive in India uh, we have this uh, subtype of cancer called triple negative breast cancer or TNBC where it is extremely difficult to actually uh, cure that individual because you have heard about chemotherapy right so the only way is really chemotherapy and chemotherapy is not very nice uh, because it is also destroying some of your healthy cells that's why you have so much of side effects uh, unfortunately when you have that last stage of uh, this, uh, TNBC there is no uh, saving. So we get a lot of uh, deaths of women also in India who suffer from breast cancer. The one aspect is that uh, for women, we always take, uh, as, as in society, we take care of others. We don't take care of ourselves. And it's important that we also take care of ourselves. Because if you don't take care of yourselves early on, and you come to the doctor much later, then there is no point of return. So uh, as you're taking care of your, when you grow up, taking care of your, say, your, your family, etc., it's also important to take care of yourself, okay? So that's what I am been doing in breast cancer. I still, we don't have an answer. And if I did have an answer, then I would have been out of a job by now. So we're still researching. My, I have a lot of uh, students that are also trying to research an important Another project that we are doing across India is called the Genome India Project, where we are sequencing the genome of Indians. Because we actually do not know our sequence. Always we refer to the Western uh, population because the, they have been sequenced. If you remember the genome sequencing that happened in the US, it was not uh, you know, genomes from across the globe, it was really the Western population. So right now, there are 22 institutes across India, north, south, east, west, and central, that have collected blood from normal, normal individuals, and has, so the sequencing is ongoing right now, and we were part of this uh, whole uh, program. Um, and so hopefully in future, and hopefully in another year or so, we will be able to actually see this, what is, how is our sequence? across India and how are we different from each other. So that's another big project and so these are projects that you know excited me because these are things that have, so, I mean, I am giving back to the society. So if I can do this kind of work, I am actually giving back to individuals like you 
and, and the future generation. So what made me take up research? Um, I'm, I'm from a family where all my, par my parents, my grandparents, my uncles were all doctors. So it was an obvious thing that I'll also become a doctor. But I, I never really got you know, excited to see my mother especially working morning till night, seeing the patients. And it was hard work because she wanted to balance both her career as well as her family because I also have a sister. So she was also managing us. So it was quite hard. But then at school, when I was uh, reading biology, um, I really got excited to see, to actually read about how things happen. I mean, how do we get to know that just two cells uniting together and then after division, we are formed, right? It's just coming from two cells. It's amazing the way that, you know, biology plays. There are so much of questions that are unanswered even till today. So um, I had really great teachers in school and they really excited me to pursue science, first of all. And um, when I finished my uh, uh, 11 and 12, I had maths as well as biology. I did not drop maths because I, my mother was saying, you need to keep maths. Maths will always help you in life, and it does. Even today in research, we have to do statistics on data that we collect. You need to know your maths. So never give up maths. It's very important. <laughs> so um, next phase was going to college. Uh, that was also in Calcutta. I went to Presidency College. Um, but in those days, you did not have exciting subjects like biotechnology or molecular biology or anything of that sort. It was botany, zoology, physiology very boring is what I felt. So I was figuring out what do I do, which one should I take? So we, I asked, like, uh, I got to know actually that in botany you do excursions uh, in your second and your third year. Zoology does, just does one excursion, physiology no excursions. That's it, I decided, it has to be botany because I wanted to go out for these excursions. I, I love traveling, so that was one, actually the reason why I took botany was to just go for these excursions. And we had lots of fun. I mean, being with your um, friends, going out for these excursions, learning during these excursions. That's when botany was no longer boring. You collect plants, you actually study them. Uh, rather than just reading in theory, by, uh, in the books, it was not that. So it was very, very different. But then I did not want to continue in botany, and so I wanted to move more into human uh, or, you know, uh, more into cell and molecular kind of work. That's when I went for my master's abroad to, U to UK, to uh, England, and then also did my PhD abroad. But I switched. So the thing, what I'm trying to say is that you don't have to fix exactly right now what you want to do. You can change. Uh, I think there's uh, Suhita who will be talking uh, in the afterwards. She's a physicist, but she's, she's in biology. She also knows biology now. So you can actually switch. Whatever interests you is what you should pursue. Because I love my work, and that's why I'm doing it. I don't think so I would want to do anything else than what I'm doing today. It's because I love what I'm doing. And if you love what you're doing, it will help you move forward because that's what you want to do. I know in school, it's like you have to study so many subjects. I see my daughter, who's also in is class nine. Why do you have to study this? Why do you have to study? I say, it's important because you need to know. Why do you have to study history and geography? I say, it's important to know your history. And it's also important to know things that are around you, how you know, um, you know, different diverse people around the world. So everything is important. You may like something more than the other, but you know, have that passion, as you all mentioned, you know, passion, dedication, and be consistent. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mayurika, ma'am, for sharing your experience. <laughs>